for uh, joining us. Um, uh, my name is Mark Dan, um, and my colleague uh, Andy Engel uh, from Advocate Attorneys. Uh, we represent um, uh, uh, Ted Sedell, who is also joining us today. Uh, Ted is a nationally recognized expert in uh, in, in, in pensions and in, in the nefarious things that go on uh, in the operation of pensions. Um, and uh, he is joining us um, today uh, because uh, he has been engaged by the Ohio Retired Teachers Association uh, to, um, to do a study of the state teachers retirement uh, system funds. Um, and uh, in the process of that, uh, uh, Ted has engaged our firm to obtain public records uh, that were nece are necessary for him to do a thorough review uh, of those funds and how the funds are being spent and the fees that are being paid to the various uh, fund managers and, and whether the fund managers that, uh, that the, that the uh, STRS has selected are, are, make sense uh, for, the, for the fund. Um, because as, as everybody knows, the pension STRS and the other public pension funds in Ohio are uh, at least um, on paper, underfunded, um, and uh, in our, in the, have been in the process of reducing benefits and reducing their offerings uh, to to both retired members uh, and cutting back on the potential uh, uh, the potential benefits to e existing teachers, um, including my wife, I might add, um, and uh, uh, which uh, so many people rely on uh, for their uh, uh, for their livelihood and their retirement. Um, so, uh, the first lawsuit that we filed, and I'm afraid, I say first because I'm afraid it's not going to be the last, uh, was against uh, the State Teachers Retirement System and CEM Benchmarking, Inc. That is a, a CEM Benchmarking, and Ted will get into more detail on this, is a consultant that, 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 uh, that, uh, that STRS hires to provide them with analysis of the, of the funds that they have acquired. Uh, or the interest in funds that they've acquired and to give them advice about whether uh, their performance matches up to what it should be for a fund of its size and scope. Um, interestingly, the last place we thought we'd have to file a lawsuit to get documents would be from uh, the expert that's supposed to be doing uh, in real real life what, what the Retired Teachers Association have asked Ted to do uh, in, in his analysis. Uh, but we were surprised. Um, and uh, they would claim that they have trade secrets to protect and that those trade secrets uh, exempt uh, through STRS. And STRS hasn't, uh, clearly hasn't uh, argued with them about this and that those trade secrets uh, are, are so important uh, and such secrets uh, that in fact, they, they allow uh, CEM and, and state teacher retirement to avoid the public records law in Ohio. Uh, we obviously disagree. Um, and uh, in, in, I'll let Andy Engel, my colleague, talk about the uh, writ of mandamus lawsuit that we filed uh, in the Ohio Supreme Court. Our expectation is that this, hopefully this will be a signal and maybe STRS will begin to put more pressure on the funds themselves to provide us with much more transparent data. We're in the process of identifying what's missing uh, from many of the, of the, of the, of the, of the documents from uh, the, particularly the private equity uh, and hedge funds. Uh, those investments of STRS, um, and, and we anticipate that we're going to have to, in many of the same kind of trade secret claims have been made. And so we're going to take them one at a time and hopefully get STRS and their vendors to do the right thing. And if they don't, then we'll be back here again uh, with future lawsuits. So Andy? Thank you, Mark. Um, as Mark said, the lawsuit that we've filed is, uh, it's called an application for a writ of mandamus, which is a special type of court order that would direct STRS and CEM to produce the records we're looking for. Um, now there are really three different sets of records um, that we're looking for. The first is the actual contract between STRS and CEM. This of course would define the scope of the engagement of CEM to do the work. Uh, the second uh, relates to reports and analysis of the, uh, uh, the fees, the management fees, the costs and expenses um, of the various funds that, that STRS has uh, as part of, of the pension. Now, we received some of those documents. Uh, we received a, a, a series of five reports 
from CEM that were provided to STRS. The problem, however, is that S CEM has redacted large portions of the data and other information within these reports, rendering them virtually useless. Um, and much of that data relates to information that is in, entirely uh, STRSs. So th this is very problematic for us because it, it basically allows CEM to claim that it has a protected trade secret in the data of STRS. Um, the third set of, of documents we're looking for are specifically reports and, and analysis documents that relate to alternative investments. Um, and in the, in the world of pensions, alternative investments are hedge funds, private equity funds, venture capital funds, these, these, um, uh, these investments that are, are not uh, traded on, on any open, open market. Um, and as a result, they're somewhat shrouded in mystery from, for the outside world. Uh, for those who operate in it, uh, a lot of this information that we're seeking is very much common knowledge. And I'll let, I'll let Ted go into that uh, at a little bit more uh, when, uh, in just a moment. But the, like I said, the objective of this lawsuit is to get the Ohio Supreme Court to issue an order that specifically uh, addresses whether this information that's being withheld from the public um, is actually protected by the Ohio Trade Secrets uh, Act, which is a uniform law enacted across the board in, in all the virtually all the states in the United States. Uh, we we believe that it's the information is not protected. We do not believe that there is any uh, real proprietary interest in this information, uh, and that's why we filed the lawsuit. And Ted, do you want to um, uh, talk a little bit about why this information is important to your to your efforts and, and kind of give a, a very uh, short description of what you're what you're up to. Sure, Mark. Um, yeah, I was hired by uh, the um, Ohio Retired Teachers Association, which went out to participants and raised money to fund a forensic investigation of the ninety billion dollar pension fund. Uh, this is a public pension fund, and uh, transparency is critical in the. And to the prudent management of dollars in government pension funds. Uh, indeed, the single most fundamental defining characteristic of American public pensions is transparency. Of all pensions globally, our nation's public pension funds, securing the retirement security of nearly 15 million state and local government workers, funded by workers and taxpayers, are required to be made are required, transparency is required under our public records laws to make these funds the most transparent in the world. Uh, and alarmingly, so far we found that the Ohio State Teachers Retirement System has long abandoned transparency, choosing instead to collaborate with Wall Street firms to eviscerate public records laws. Uh, so we're concerned that uh, the information is provided under the state public records laws, uh, what SDRS has done is simply deferred to private firms like CEM to answer the question of whether this information is public. And not surprisingly, the majority of those firms uh, believe, desire to keep this in, their information uh, from the participants and the stakeholders of the fund. We're also concerned with respect to the uh, investments we would like to see the prospectuses and other offering documents that under our nation's federal securities laws are required to be made available to all investors in these funds. These are not trade secrets. These are not top secret documents. These are prospectuses, offering documents, marketing materials that are uh, directed to all investors. And what STRS would like to say is that uh, if you invest in a, in, a, in a mutual fund or fund uh, outside of SDRS, you'll get a prospectus. If, you, if SDRS invests in a mutual fund or other uh, type of security, the public's not allowed to see that prospectus. And that, that of course, makes 
no sense at all. The state public records laws should not thwart the federal securities laws. With respect to CM, the firm that STRS has retained to analyze its fee, the fees it pays, and evaluate how competitive uh, those fee structures are, CM is, is, uh, has long uh, advocated for transparency. Its website speaks to that transparency is the right thing to do, that transparency results in better outcomes. So for the firm to be advocating secrecy is uh, surprising. Also in 2020, CEM announced in a white paper that public pensions are not disclosing fully 50% of the fees that they pay. So um, this is a firm that evaluates pension costs, but is telling us that half of pension costs are being concealed. I think the stakeholders in Ohio uh, have a compelling need to see the information and, and have it made public to determine whether all the costs are being uh, disclosed or as I believe, a substantial portion of the costs are being concealed. Hopefully that, that clarifies what we're doing. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Thank you. Um, does anybody have any questions? Um, I have a, this is Jim Province. I have a question for Ted. Um, the fact that you have to go to court to get these records released, how is that going to affect the timeline of your audit? And I know you mentioned a few minutes ago uh, plans to issue a report early. Are you going to continue with that even while you're in court? Yes. Uh, STRS has apparently made the decision to slow walk uh, responding, responding to our uh, request for information. So what I've decided to do, which I haven't done before, is to issue two reports. Uh, the initial report uh, I intend to issue probably next week, um, late next week. Um, and then we'll follow up with another report later uh, with respect to uh, some of the other investments that are, that are not addressed in the initial report. I think what, what you will be surprised to find, what stakeholders in Ohio will be surprised to find is, uh, I do forensic work. Forensic work by nature involves uh, not, in most cases, not having access to all the documents. So I think you'll be surprised to see how much we were able to piece together uh, about what is going on in STRS and some truly fundamental uh, mismanagement and misrepresentations uh, regarding the management of the pension. Um, so we've done a lot. Uh, the report is basically ready to go. And I think next week, late next week would be the probable timing for release of the initial 75 page or so report. But, but our expectation is based on some of the responses we've gotten from the individual funds, which is really where the rubber meets the road because we want to find out what the real cost of those funds are to STRS. <laughs> so it can be compared to other potential investments uh, to, to see which, which, which makes the most sense uh, for those uh, pension holders and future, uh, future pension years. Um, that uh, th there will probably be a number of other suits that will have to be filed. Uh, it, for simplicity, for the, the Supreme Court and for, and for our, our efforts, we're going to try to bring those individually against each, uh, each fund so that uh, they can collaborate with each other, uh, so that we can more efficiently litigate these claims and try to get some of the answers more quickly. And, and one of the things we're in the process of doing is prioritizing which of those uh, which of the funds where this trade secret exception has been asserted uh, that, that are the most important from Ted's perspective to, uh, to, to, to pursue. So we, this is the beginning, not the end. 